guys and welcome to my first video of 2015. What? 2015? I knew that this was going to happen, I knew that it was going to come around sooner or later but I just feel like it's come around a lot sooner than I had expected. So last year I filmed the resolutions tag and that was quite fun and I enjoyed it but I don't think that I'm going to do that this year. Mainly because I watched it back a few days ago and just cringed at how badly I had failed at all of those resolutions. I said that I was going to develop this whole new skincare routine, didn't happen. I think I probably said that I was going to do more exercise, which didn't happen but definitely has to happen in 2015. And basically I just kind of felt like that was that's a, a fine type of video and I might do a blog post on a few resolutions or whatever but what I'm going to do instead, in line with the kind of direction that I was taking my channel towards the end of 2014, was do a film and TV related video. So this is my televisual resolutions for 2015. So what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to talk through 10 shows that I want to watch in 2015. Don't worry, I'm not going to go into detail because we all know what I'm like. I love to talk, I could be here all day. But I'm just going to tell you the 10 shows that I'm going to watch in 2015 and why I want to watch them. Then I'm going to tell you 5 shows that I'm going to finish watching or continue watching in 2015 that I've fallen behind with. And then I'm going to tell you 3 shows that I want to rewatch because I know, I know, I shouldn't be including rewatching in this video since that's the whole problem with my television schedule at the moment. But, you know, I can't help it. But I promise they are ones that I haven't seen for a while so it's totally fine. And finally, I'm going to recommend three shows that I think that you should watch in 2015. So the first of the ten shows that I plan to watch in 2015 is Mad Men. I know, I know, I'm sure that it, it's as shocking to me as it is to you that someone who is as daft about TV, but also someone who has just completed a marketing degree, has not watched Mad Men. All I have seen is the pilot episode, I watched that at uni for one of my classes, we watched the pilot episode. And I loved it, I thought it was fantastic, but just haven't got around to watching the rest of it yet. So I have the seasons 1-5 to five box set, which is Emma's, I've got that upstairs and I am going to watch that at some point soon. Next on my list is one that was recently put up on Netflix, much to my joy, and that is House. Now I could sit here and tell you that the reason that I want to watch House is because I've really wanted to watch it and been intrigued by the sound of the show for a very long time, which is true. But the main reason that I want to watch House is my soon to be completely out of control girl crush on Jennifer Morrison. <sighs> Honestly guys, I just, that woman, I just love her. Also Hugh Laurie, so you know, these seem like good enough reasons to watch the show. Obviously it's a highly acclaimed show and people have loved it, you know, loved it for the entire time that it was on, so I'm pretty sure that I'm going to enjoy it and as I say it's now on Netflix, so I'm going to get watching that soon. Third on the list is another one that's just been put up on Netflix, which I discovered at half one this morning on Twitter, someone mentioned it, and I was ready to start watching it there and then, but I thought, control yourself, you can watch it tomorrow. So that is Pretty Little Liars. I'm a huge fan of the teen TV genre, you will know that if you've watched my videos before, I have mentioned enough times that it's one of my favourite genres, and Pretty Little Liars is one of these shows that for years I've been like, I would love that, <laughs> why do I not watch this? And I've probably seen a lot of spoilers and stuff on Twitter, which is not great, but I'm still really looking forward to watching it. Next on my list is Arrow. Now, I will be completely honest about this. I actually don't know a massive amount about Arrow. All I know is that people have been absolutely raving about it this year and saying that it's really excellent. And also, whenever I click on the, um, might as well just be upfront about it, the Captain Swan hashtag on Twitter when I'm looking up Once Upon a Time stuff which I do quite regularly. Um, I quite often see names of characters from Arrow kind of floating around in, in those chats, so I feel like it's something that I'm going to like if people who like similar shows to me already are talking about it, so I'm looking forward to watching that. Next on the list is The Leftovers, which I actually can't believe I haven't watched yet because it is one of the creators of The Leftovers is one of the geniuses behind Lost, Damon Lindelof. Lost is my favourite programme of all time. Why have I not watched The Leftovers yet? I don't know. But my friend Lynn talked about Leftovers in one of her recent videos. It was her film TV and YouTube favourites of 2014, which was a great video and I will link it in the description box if you want to go and check it out. But she was raving about it, so that's another thumbs up for me to go and watch it. Next we have Sons of Anarchy. Again, this was a show that I wasn't, you know, instantly kind of drawn to, but then quite a few of my favourite vloggers mentioned it and said that they really enjoyed it. And then even more importantly, my friend Nikki from The Lunar Lights, I'll link her blog in the description box, told me that she was absolutely loving it and she kind of gave it a big thumbs up for me. So I'm going to go and watch that based on her recommendation, but also the recommendation of a lot of vloggers who I really like. 
I'm actually really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be something a little bit different, but definitely something enjoyable. Next we have the Mindy Project. This is something that I have seen bits and pieces of and I always seem to know what's going on in the Mindy Project because I love Mindy Kaling and so I tend to keep up with her on social media and whatever. So I feel like I always know what's happening in the Mindy Project, but I've never actually properly sat down to watch it. So that's a plan for 2015. Next is Breaking Bad. I know this is another major, massive, hugely, highly acclaimed show that I still haven't watched. And currently my parents are watching it and they've like devoured the whole first and half of the second season in the space of a couple of days. And now I'm gonna be the only person left in the house who hasn't watched it yet. In fact, I'm gonna be one of the only people I know who hasn't watched it yet. And that doesn't seem right. So I'm gonna to have to make time for it in 2015. Ninth out of 10, we have Grimm. We all know I love fairy tales. It's one of my favorite things. My blog header is a fairy tale style blog header. I'm a fan and yet I haven't watched Grimm. I almost started watching it on Netflix a few months ago and then on the same night I realized that further along the list on the TV shows page, the originals had appeared and I didn't know that season one of the originals was on Netflix and that was pretty much it. <laughs> I just sat and devoured the originals instead and kind of forgot about Grimm. So it's one that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about but because of the kind of fairy tale mystical genre I know that it's something that I'm going to enjoy and so I'm going to go back to that at some point soon. And finally we have Parks and Recreation. I'm quite ashamed of myself actually that I haven't watched Parks and Rec yet because Amy Poehler. I love Amy Poehler. Why? What have I been doing with my time that I haven't made time to watch Parks and Rec? I really don't know. I know so many people who adore this show and as I say I'm a huge fan of Amy Poehler so that is one that I definitely have to watch over the next little while. So those were the 10 shows that I intend to watch from scratch in 2015. Next I'm going to talk about 5 shows that I'm going to continue watching slash catch up with slash finish watching in 2015. So first on that list is The Office, The American Office. I love this so much and this was another show that I was really silly and put off watching for a really long time and didn't watch until far later than I should have. It's just incredible. The characterisation in this show is just insanely good. I love them all and every episode puts a massive big smile on my face apart from one that I watched recently which made me cry which we won't talk about. I just adore it. I just think it's incredible and I'm currently just towards the end of season 7 so I think I'm on about episode 24 or 23 of season 7 and so I've got the rest of that, just a few more episodes of 7 and then 8 and 9 to watch and I'm looking forward to it but also sad that it will soon be over. Next is The 100. I started watching The 100 on E4 and I loved it, I thought that it was great but in typical me style I think we've been spoiled by things like binge watching on Netflix. When something's on TV, unless it's Once Upon a Time, which I've done very well with, when I have to wait a week between episodes, I tend to get really bad and I end up forgetting to watch it and then weeks go past and I sort of lose track of it. And that's what happened with The 100. I watched about five or six episodes and then completely lost the thread of it because I hadn't been keeping up with it. And that was very foolish because it was really, really good. And so I want to catch up with that in 2015. Next is one I briefly mentioned earlier and that is The Originals. Oh, this show, oh my god, honestly, I just, I can't explain how good this show is. I think people who don't watch The Vampire Diaries in the originals definitely, I've said this before, I think people definitely won't give it enough credit because the rich, intense, crazy, amazing history that they've built into these shows just blows my mind constantly. I just, I think that the writing on these shows is really, really good and um, the Michelson family in the originals, the original family just intrigue me so much, they fascinate me. The relationships between the characters, there's so many different dimensions to them and I can't say enough good things. So season two is currently on in America and I haven't actually watched any of it yet. So that is one that I plan to get caught up with very soon. Next, I want to finish How I Met Your Mother. I loved seasons one to six of How I Met Your Mother. I absolutely just loved them to pieces. And then I got sort of halfway through season seven, or I think I watched most of season seven, and then that's me, I've fallen completely behind. I actually do know what happens at the end, I know how it ends, and I know that most people were really angry about the ending of this show, but I actually really liked it, and I think that it made a lot of sense. If you disagree with that, feel free to tell me in the comments below, but I thought that it was a really good ending for it, but I haven't actually seen the last two seasons, so I'm going to sit down and watch them at some point this year. And the fifth show that I wanted to talk about in terms of finishing it off or catching up with it is awkward. 
I've only seen season one of Awkward, but I just loved it. I thought it was amazing. I watched it on when I had the Amazon Prime video trial, but that was the only opportunity that I really had to watch it. And I just thought that it was great. If you haven't heard of Awkward, it is a show on MTV. It's a teen drama about a girl called Jaina and her just teen experiences at school and with her friends and with sort of first boyfriends and whatever. And I just think that it's a really funny, quite real representation of high school life. It's not your kind of overly glamorised gossip girl style representation of school, nor is it the kind of like, if you've seen Life Unexpected, the um, really rough upbringing kind of situation. It's just something nice in the middle and um, I really enjoyed it and so I really want to catch up with that in 2015. Next I'm going to talk about three shows that I want to re-watch in 2015. I know I said that I wasn't going to re-watch things but let's face it I am so I might as well tell you what I'm going to re-watch. The first one is Buffy the Vampire Slayer because I've not seen Buffy for years and I will be honest I think there's probably a lot of episodes that I've actually never seen but I did watch quite a lot of it when I was younger and I just loved it and my best friend has currently been re-watching all of it and talking and raving about it and it's just really put me in the mood to rewatch Buffy. Next we have Green Wing which is one of my favourite comedy shows. It's just, oh it's so good. And um, Emma and I, the, I've only actually seen it all the way through once, just you know in succession. I sat with Emma and we watched it over the space of a few weeks, we just watched all of the episodes and it's one of her favourite shows and her kind of joy and enthusiasm for it I think just got completely passed on to me. It's quirky, it's very weird, it's very out there. If you are into those kind of like bizarre, quirky, British comedies, black books, space, that kind of sort of genre, um, then I'm sure you'll like Green Wing if you've never watched it before, but that's definitely one very high up on my list to rewatch this year. And the third show that I plan to rewatch, I've already started rewatching, and it's a bad one because it is one that I've seen a million times, but there's no point in apologising for it, it's one of the best shows of all time. It's Gilmore Girls. I've already started rewatching it, I've rewatched season one, most of it over the Christmas holidays, and just Every time I watch it, and I watch it a lot, but every time I watch it I just fall completely in love with it again. I fall completely in love with Lorelai and Luke and Rory and Star Hollow and everything about it is just amazing. And so if you have not seen it before and you have the opportunity to watch it this year, please do because you will not regret it and it's definitely one that I'm going to be re-watching over the next few months. I have an honourable mention for a show that has not been put into any of these categories because it should have been put into the continue watching category but I didn't have enough space <laughs> but I'm going to continue watching and catch up with Orphan Black because I've only seen season one and the first episode of season two and it was one of my TV highlights of the year. I thought that it was absolutely incredible and I'm definitely going to be watching the next couple of seasons soon. Lastly I'm going to recommend three shows that I think that you should watch in 2015. First is one of my favourite shows of all time, I've mentioned it very frequently because it's incredible. Please watch 24, I can't recommend 24 enough, it's an excellent show, it's an excellent concept, the structure and the, the style of the show just blows my mind every time I watch it. Morally it's, it's quite an interesting concept um, but it's just amazing and I love it and Kiefer Sutherland is incredible so go and watch 24. Trying to keep my genres <laughs> Wide open, the next one that I want you to go and watch is Veronica Mars. If you haven't watched Veronica Mars, you are missing out, people. It is insanely good. Kristen Bale is just unbelievably good in this show, and Veronica is one of my favourite characters ever. There's nothing that I could say about this show that could accurately describe how incredible it is, and how brilliant the writing is, and how wonderful the acting is. So all you can really do is go and sit down and watch it. So that is my second big recommendation. And third, this is a show that aired this year and if you didn't see it, I feel for you because it was an experience and a half. But if you didn't watch Fargo this year, go and watch the first season. I have to tell you, that show just blew my mind. Far and away, one of the best things on TV this year for me. Martin Freeman was just insanely good. Billy Bob Thornton was incredible. The entire cast was fantastic and it just it was a phenomenally good show so if you have the opportunity to watch that at some point this year do it so there we have it my televisual resolutions for 2015 i'm also excited for any new things that are coming onto tv this year that i will find and discover because i love discovering new shows it's just such a joy and that sounds sad but it's true if there are any shows that you think that I should be watching this year, please pop them in the comment section down below. Tell me what you think that I should have on my to watch list. And if there are any shows that you're planning to rewatch or that you have got into recently that you're really enjoying, let me know what they are. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope that you had a lovely new year. I certainly did. It was quite a chilled one this year and it was really nice. So I hope that you had fun and I hope that the start of 2015 has been treating you well. And I will speak to you again soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.
you know, the reruns were on TV and then a few years ago I picked up this box set. And Faulty Towers is one of the very few shows that I genuinely don't think will ever stop being funny. There are